Welcome to my workshop. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out a laser from Atomstack A24 Pro. It's a very compact machine with allegedly plenty of power under the hood. So let's check out what's in the box. We're gonna put it together and then we're gonna run some tests to see how capable this machine really is. Now, as you can see, everything's nice and neatly packaged. Everything has its own cubby. So I'm gonna take everything out and we're gonna see what we are actually getting in this box. And that's what you get in the package itself. I have to say, there's not much uh, needed to actually put the machine together and make it up and running. Um, but we're gonna go through the process. You do have some bits and pieces, but yeah, all in all, very compact package here guys and we're going to talk about this frame in a second as I am super impressed with this but first of all let's get this operational. We need to install the plate that is actually holding the laser module on this plate. When that's completed we can slide in the laser module inside and with two thumb screws we can secure it in place. They are quite large and easy to screw in and handle. Okay, when that's done, I'm going to add the air hose to the module at the top as it does have an inbuilt air assist support, which is very important if you want to cut things out. It will give you far better results and you just whack it in here at the front as well. Now, if we turn this machine over, at the top here, we need to install the link to the module from the motherboard itself. And that goes just over here with the big sign laser. Now in the package, you do get some cable time management clips. So we can whack a couple just over here at the back of the axis to make sure these wires are out of the way. Obviously, when managing your wires, make sure you've got a full movement and that there's nothing in the way. Now we can install the Wi-Fi antenna. And as you can see straight away, we've got some ports over here. Type C, we're going to connect our laptop or PC to this. Next, we've got the power adapter. So the machine has got some power. And the last one, if you do decide to buy an air pump, which I highly suggest, it's an extra accessory, but if you want to cut things out, definitely worth it. You can actually plug it in, in the frame itself, and the air pump will take power from here. At the front of the machine, you do have some safety features like the lock over here. So for example, if you're sharing your workshop with somebody, you know, you can lock the machine and nobody else will be able to use it. Then you've got an alarm, for example, if you tilt accidentally the machine more than 15 degrees, it will shut itself off and it will let you know there's something wrong. And also it will alarm you if a fire happens as you work. So uh, very good safety features there. Next, you've got the on off switch, which is also the emergency stop button. And on the other side of the frame, you've got the Y interface, uh, USB. So if you've got a USB stick with some data, you can put in that. You've got the reset button, HDMI. If you want to buy an extra accessory, a LCD screen to operate this machine, that's how you do it. Also, you can buy some rotary accessories for this machine. Then you've got one port over here and there's a switch just behind there um, to switch it over from your normal operational to the rotary tool accessory. Always before you actually start operating with a machine of this type, make sure that the pulleys are well tensioned. Okay, so you've got the pulleys just over here and I can feel that the right hand side is a little bit loose so I'm going to show you how you can easily adjust this. At the back of the frame you do have two screws. This one will tension um, the pulley for you. This one is just holding the position so I'm going to loosen this up and I'm going to add a bit of tension here. And obviously keep on checking when the tension is right you can lock it in place. I think that's about perfect. And you've got the same thing on the other corner. 
if you do want to tension the x-axis a little bit in my case it's actually all right but you've got the same setup with those two screws just over here so super easy to adjust this as we are still having a close-up look at the machine the whole frame it's actually quite heavy for how big it is and it's all made out of one piece okay there's no assembly everything is casted from one single piece and to say a few things about the quality of the machine apart from the rigid frame the rollers here are made from metal so they're not plastic as usually you would get you've got some metal railing that this is going on and just inside there you've got a linear guide for the x-axis as well so very nice quality solution in this laser machine now the frame itself is a little bit smaller and it does have a bit smaller engraving area which is 365 by 305 millimeters this machine can get up to 36,000 millimeters per minute when engraving and as you've seen, putting this machine together, it takes absolutely no time. It will take you probably about 10 minutes tops to make sure everything is operational, including the tension on the pulleys as well. The module itself in this case has got power of between 20 to 24 watts. And the laser dot in here is 0.06 by 0.06, which is really, really tiny. And that means it will give you a really good quality when engraving. But we're gonna test that out a little bit later on. Now, when it comes to testing, I'm gonna do a engraving test on this. Then we're gonna do some cutting tests to see what are the capabilities of this machine. And then we're gonna go through different types of materials to see how it performs and what it can actually do. Now, I'm just gonna connect it to my laptop. The software you can use for this is Lightburn and Laser Gerbil. Um, I'm gonna be using Lightburn for all the tests. And if you do want my test files, just drop me an email and I'll send them to you as well. I don't mind <laughs> sharing them at all. So let's get to it. All right, I've got my cutting files ready, but before we can continue, we need to set up the focal points of this machine. So we've got this metal uh, indicator here. The top is for engraving, the bottom is for cutting. So that's 80 millimeters, that's four millimeters. I'm just going to put it like that. I'm going to loosen the screws on the side, drop the module down, tighten them back up. And we are set up and ready to go. Okay, let's check out the results. The maximum speed is 36,000 millimeters per minute. And as you can see at 100% power, at 80 and at 60, it does perform really, really well. However, at 20%, that's probably the area that you need to avoid. But again, you've got the sweet spot, the sweet middle here with really good performance and at very quick speed. 4,000 millimeters per minute, 100% power definitely too slow and too much power for that you probably are looking for 20 percent if you're using speeds like that but overall look at that fantastic results even the signs and everything nice and sharp here guys right let's do the first cutting test right let's have a look what results we managed to get i think yeah no surprise here guys three millimeter plywood no issues at all in cutting all the tiles even at 400 millimeters per minute and 80 percent power all right four millimeter ply let's go with that right four millimeter ply let's check what results we've got and again full flow really really good 400 millimeters per minute 80 percent power not bad going tell you what let's put it to the test Six millimeter ply next. Okay, and let's see what the laser managed to do with six millimeter ply. Well, 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 that is not bad going at all. 300 millimeters, 90% power. We managed to cut through that. No more is coming out. And just to preview, this is six mil. 
and it still managed to get really good performance on this. Let's test out the true capability when it comes to cutting. I've got 10 millimeter dark ash, this is hardwood, 15 millimeter pine board and 20 millimeter pine board. Let's see how many passes this machine will need to cut through these. First of all, the 10 millimeter ash board. And as you've seen, two passes for hardwood, 10 millimeter ash wood. No overburn, no nothing. Very good performance there, guys. Now let's try the 15 millimeter pine board. Well, check that out. 15 millimeter pine board, two passes as well. No issues at all. No overburn around the back. Very good performance again. 20 mil. Let's try that. Three passes, guys, for 20 mil pine board. Hanging on the last couple of strings of wood. But look at that. No overburn again, beautiful clean cut, 20 millimeter pine board, very, very good. Now I think we had enough cutting test with this machine and as we can see, it's very, very capable. But let's do some engraving tests now. First of all, let's engrave a photo with maximum speed of engravement, 36,000 millimeters per minute and at 100% power. And we'll see what results we get. Right, let's check out the results, but I can see already they're absolutely stunning. That's one of the best engravement I've seen in a while. Look at the quality of that. That small laser dot really does the job. Absolutely superb quality there, guys. If you need a machine for engraving, I think this could be it. Let's test the engraving on different materials now. Steel. Look at that, we actually managed to get different shades of colour. Got really dark in the middle, a little bit brighter on the parameter. Absolutely fantastic result, guys. Right then, let's engrave slate. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> Look at that, absolutely perfect engravement. Piece of leather. Now, I'll tell you what, with 20% power, 2000 millimeters per minute, that's still a little bit too much. You can definitely go down with that. But uh, look at that, fantastic. A little bit like 3D with the shadow effect on this. Fantastic. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Now that's all the tests I've prepared for you today and I hope these gave you a bit better understanding how this machine works, how it performs and what you can expect. Now the small laser dot size really showcases when engraving. Engravement is phenomenal, I have to say the quality is really really good. Now if you are looking for a very compact, easy to put together, there's no assembly here, a machine with small, relatively small footprint, this machine could be for you. It's in one single piece um, and it's just the quality of this machine should help in maintaining longevity of this laser. Now the cost of the bare unit is actually not too bad, it's fairly affordable, especially when you consider the quality and the power of the module itself. However, you're not getting an air pump and that's an additional cost to this. And if you want to cut things out, definitely an air pump is a necessity to get very good performance. And this module actually has got built-in air assist. Now remember, 
smaller footprint, smaller work area means that you're not going to be able to tackle larger projects. However, as with open framed lasers, you can just put it on top of a product or whatever you want to engrave. Now, initially, I thought the focal point, setting the focal uh, for this laser will be an issue where you've got this plate for engraving eight millimeters and for cutting four millimeters. But to be absolutely honest with you, on those projects where I was engraving and then cutting, I was just using the four millimeter uh, setting and the engraving I just dialed down or dialed up the settings i.e. have allowed the laser to go a little bit quicker and reduce the power as well so the engravement came out absolutely fine with that that was my only concern really uh, for projects that require engraving and then cutting in the same file and for me maybe it's not ideal but they came out absolutely fine other than that, at this moment, I've got no issues with the machine. It works absolutely fine. Uh, the rails and everything, the movement looks really, really solid. Uh, however, I will be making another video with this machine. It will be a project. So you will see a <laughs> in-life situation, a project uh, that will be made with this laser to see how it operates in real life rather than just tests so if you don't want to miss that video make sure to subscribe to my channel as that will be coming uh, very shortly in the next couple of weeks if you are interested in this machine and if you want to learn a little bit more about it i'm going to drop some links down below in the description of this video so you can have a look at more specs and uh, how everything is looking especially with the prices nowadays as well heading into christmas i think there will be some good sales on it as well but don't go just yet i've got some really cool two playlists for you over here plenty of videos that are already made on lasers projects uh, around workshop diy and everything in between so click on those and hopefully you'll find an interesting video you can watch next so i hope to see you on my next video take care